it's time for us to take a look at a conversation on property tax. This is with the Oxfam Tax Dialogue. Let's take a look. Hello there, this is City TV at 97.3 City FM. You are watching Breakfast Daily and listening to the City Breakfast Show. This is our Tax Dialogue series here at City TV and City FM. This is in partnership with Oxfam Ghana. The main idea is to educate uh, you on your tax obligations and then also try as much as possible to have a conversation on how best government can implement some of the tax measures for us to get the kind of revenue we want here in the country. Today's conversation, we are focusing on property tax. I know you're excited because it is one tax area that a lot of people are abreast with. The issue, however, is that you have not been able to reap the full benefit of you know, the revenue from that area. And to help us with this discussion is tax consultant Francis Timoboy, as well as an assistant commissioner at the Ghana Revenue Authority. Francis, welcome to the program. Thank you. Mm, good to see you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Asam, we are meeting once again. <laughs> nice to have you on the show today. Nice to be here. Thank you. Well, Francis, I want to begin with you because you are the consultant mm. here. On top of my head, I always hear property tax. The argument is that it's a low-hanging fruit. We can rake in more revenue from property tax. But for those of us who do not even know what property taxation is, educate us legally and administratively what is property taxation. So property tax is, um, let me say, compulsory fee or levy that is imposed on owners of properties. And in some countries, it, it, in some countries it is both on the land and then the building. But in Ghana, we only levy it on buildings. Uh, possibly because, you know, in Ghana, we have a lot of ownership of land issues. So if someone owns a land or pro a building, then the person is supposed to pay some fees or levy to the, normally to the, um, the local assembly. So you look at the Local Government Act, and um, Section 146 says that the district assembly should levy uh, property owners within their jurisdiction. So in Ghana, technically or legally, it is administered by the local or district assembly. And the idea is that governments all over the world look at taxation and on what should we levy the tax. So they look at the creation of wealth. So you realize that if you create wealth by working, maybe you are paid salary or you do business, you pay income tax. Maybe when you create the world, you don't want to consume it. If you consume it, then we say we are levying you with consumption tax. So you pay VAT, CST, and all those things. That's when you are consuming your wealth. And then when you hold your wealth in the form of property, then we say you should pay property tax. So there are various ways of, or various bases for levying the citizens of the people so that they can contribute to fund the, the country in which we live in. So be, be, the basis be, of the property mm. is that we, we levy it on people who own property. So before you get into how it is calculated and what form and shape it takes, when we say property, what kind of properties are we talking about? Landed, landed mm. property. But like I said, in Ghana, it excludes the bare land. So if you don't have anything on the, on the land, mm. then it's unlikely the district assembly will levy you. But as long as you see the building, you go to East Legon, the buildings that you see, your house, both residential and commercial properties, we levy the property rate on them. The law makes provision for few exemptions, like if the property is used for uh, religious uh, purposes, like church buildings, those are exempted under the law. And again, if you own property and you are above 70 years, the framers of the law says that you should not be subject to those levies. But technically, every building you see around is supposed to be levied the property rate. Mm, I see. Let me go to Madame Assam. Since time immemorial, property taxation has been in existence, but we have not been able to see the real results therein. Well, it could be that a lot of people are not seeing, uh, you know, the kind of activities district assemblies are using, you know, revenue generated from property taxation for. Is property taxation still relevant in our tax regime, in our local content, 
is it still important going forward as far as a revenue mobilization for us is, is, is concerned? All right, thank you very much. To realize that when you travel, you've been out of the country for a long time and you come back to Ghana, you see a big change. Scrapers springing up, beautiful buildings, these are assets that are owned by persons. Property tax has always been with us. Earlier, it was the local government and the metropolitan and municipal assemblies who were collecting. It was in 2021 that GIRA started collecting monies. We stopped our cash transactions and collecting monies through online processes. So the government realized that we should, GIA should take over the collection of property tax in consultation with the local government. Prior to that, properties that were identified before we took over was about 1.2 billion. And now we are talking over 12 billion that have been identified and have been built. Using the unified platform that was created in collaboration with uh, the Lands Commission, properties were identified and they were valued and rates were assigned. These rates are based on location. So we have class one, two, or three, depending on the location of the property. And uh, rateable values are given. And it's also taken into consideration whether the property is for commercial purpose, residential, or an industrial area. Then those rates are multiplied by the values that have been assigned. That is what helps us to determine what must be paid. We realize that when you go on the app, myassembly.gov.gh, you are able to register yourself. And in coming up with the app, they were able to get information from Lands Commission. So there's a lot of information concerning individuals and what you have, which is linked to your Ghana card. That all says that if you are an individual and you have a registered immovable property, automatically you are there. The apps allows you to log on using your Ghana card. Then when you register, you link it to your telephone number and you have access to your bills. And the moment the bill is sent, you are given 42 days to pay your liability. Francis, as a consultant, <laughs> where do you stand? Because at first it was district assemblies collecting the rates. Government says now let's go to GRA, let GRA through collaboration with the assemblies collect the rates. But just recently we just heard the finance minister say that well, the collection should go back to the district assembly. Over the years, what have you observed? in terms of management of you know the collection of the of the property tax how better have we become with the authorities that the district assemblies or with the GRE? so me i think that the imf pointed out as one of our biggest problem is that there's so much on top revenue which is in the property rate system you see earlier i gave you the basis of government levying taxes mm -hmm. that we have consumption tax, we have income tax, and then we have property tax. Over the years, you notice we've been focusing on only that alone. We've been focusing on consumption tax, which is about 60% of our total taxes we collect. And then for income tax, we are even not doing well. Property tax today, the real estate sector, we hear is estimated over $430 billion. So over the years, it's an area we've ignored completely. And so in 2021, we were all excited that the GRE was coming on board. In fact, if you look at the GRE Act, Section 4 there about, it says that GRE should work with the district assemblies so that they can help them in their revenue mobilization. So 
when the policy was introduced, we were excited. And personally, I think that it was a very good policy because we have property owners who are giving out their properties for renter. Mm -hmm. Under the income tax, that they are supposed to pay rent tax. But how many landlords can you, the tenant, say mm -hmm. you are <laughs> taking rent, rent tax from his? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't even work. We yeah. have plenty of properties, landlords around, they don't pay rent tax. So when the collaboration was coming, some of us thought that that is good because the law mandates the district assemblies to collect property rate from their districts. They know them, they know, mm. they after they even give the permits to them to build. So if the district assembly is going for the property tax and GRA is following them, GRA is able to tell and say that you have collected rent tax and therefore we also get rent tax from that place. So we thought it was the best. But unfortunately, we just heard that there were uh, you know, some misunderstanding between the Association of District Assemblies and then the GRA concerning the implementation. Mm -hmm. Then the minister announced in the budget that this assembly should go back and collect. I think that is it's quite mm -hmm. unfortunate because if you look at 2022, somewhere in the budget, 2021 budget, we were told that they collected just 39 million Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, go look at even Accra alone, the properties that we have in Accra. Go to Kumasi, Takrade. So why have we ignored it completely and focusing on only few consumption taxes? Before we go into the mobilization proper, first educate us, how is property rate calculated if you are able to walk us through the process? So there's no specific um, way of calculating it. It, it. it depends on a number of factors. So first, the location. You know some places are more developed than others. So places like East Legon will have a rate higher than uh, maybe uh, <laughs> a very remote area where facilities are not available. Mm. Again, it also depends on the type of property, residential, industrial, or commercial. All of these things are factors that we take into consideration. But the valuation, the basis of, of, of the calculation is based on valuation, mm. what we call the assessed value. Mm. So, land so value. current value. Yes. Mm. So land valuation board together with the duties assemblies will value the property. And even the valuation they do today can even be different from tomorrow. So there are, uh, you know, revisions to the valuation. And the rate varies between 0.5% to 3%, mm. depending on the factor that I've mentioned. So if it's residential, the value will be different. Um, the value of the property will be different and then the location also counts. Uh, the general idea is that if you are located in a well-developed area, you are, you've been compensated for by the district assemblies. Of course, the district assembly is supposed to you know, take care of some of these street lights and those roads. So if those places have been developed, the values within those areas will be more or higher than places that are less uh, you know, and developed. And are there instances of undervaluation of the property? It's unlikely because the thing is done, but when we locate a zone, when the valuation board, of course, they are experts. When the land valuation people locate a zone and they look at the, the nature of buildings around that place, and then they locate and then they value it. Just like you are going to buy a property, you call a valuer to value it for you. So they value it and place a commercial value to, on, on it. And then that valuation is what will determine the basis for the calculation for the, the property rate. Mm. Uh, Madam Emilia, is there a category for, you know, the kind of uh, explanation that uh, Francis has given in terms of the properties? Right. Uh, every district has categorized its um, properties and location based on location. Because I, just as you said, when we look at East Legon uh, against maybe Medina, they might be in the same district. However, the rates will differ. So we have the class one class two, class three, depending on the property. And that is what informs the rate uh, impulse, which is used to determine how much one must pay. So if you are located in a particular place, your property will be valued based on the class of the area. And in determining the impulse for a particular class, you also look at whether it is residential, whether it's an industrial area, whether it is mixed, all together will inform what rate you have. So you should know that when you take your bill, it will be different from someone else. You can't say that my house is just like 
Mr. Soso and So's house. So we should be paying the same rate. It will differ depending on your location, depending on maybe even if you are in the regional capital, when you are in a district, all together will inform how much you pay. I see. Interesting. So over these years, that uh, the jury or even the district assemblies collaborated to you know collect property rate on top of your head. What we say is the is the topmost challenge in, in in realizing our property rate dreams. If I want to put it that way, <laughs> you know our, our, our numbering system was the biggest challenge, but it has been improved. Now with the digital address system, you can identify a property. And the app is said that it can lead you directly to a particular place. And GRA is also using information being guarded through identifying properties to update data for rent tax purposes. But I will say that the biggest challenge is the fact that individuals in the country do not appreciate why they will pay tax, why they should pay tax. Because the first thing you hear someone talk about is that I got my own money, government didn't give me any money, and why should I pay any tax? The property is mine. And there's always the misconception also about the basic rates that are charged by the district assemblies, which are paid by individuals within a particular district. And again, the property rates. Property rate is for the property that you own. You have an asset in this area. That's why you're paying property rate. And you might give this property out as rental for an entity, a company, or an individual to stay in, or you will stay there yourself. If you are staying there yourself, you pay your property rate. You will not pay any rent tax. But if you are expected to pay rent tax for um, giving out commercial property, you pay 15%. For giving out a residential property, you pay 8%, apart from your property rate. Then also, our attitude towards tax collectors. Sometimes you go there, you ask a tenant to give you information as to where to trace the owner of the business. The tenant is scared that my landlord will reject me because I gave the information. And sometimes you meet the individual, the next thing that they will say is that this is a family house. But if it might be a family house, but they might have given it out. And because it is family property, sometimes it's difficult to identify whom to even hold responsible. It might be one house, but has been uh, given to five sets of children, and they might have given to their grandchildren. So sometimes you get there and you don't even know whom to hold responsible. I will say that if education goes far and we all appreciate the fact that we all need to contribute a bit to national development, I think we can go a long way. And that's Thank that you. education we are having right exactly. here on the tax dialogues here on 97.3 CTFM as well as CTT. Well, Francis, beyond you know the issue of challenges or the mechanisms we use in collecting uh, you know property tax. Is it time for us to look at a revision of you know, the current regime as far as property taxation is concerned? For example, doesn't the issue go beyond just the collection, but issue of data? You don't have the right data for us to go after the people who are supposed to pay. Also, the exemptions, isn't it time for us to review some of them? For example, if you say a place for burial has been exempted, now we have people operating private burial facilities they are making a lot of money there even the religious places that we are talking about some of them are using it for commercial purposes yeah. and what have you will you say that we should revise the tax administration in terms of property taxation or what we have now is better more resilient and more robust so i would have rather ways we maintain as it is mm. but rather deal with the challenges and Madam SCM talked about some of the challenges. I will still hammer on education. You mm -hmm. know, before the, minister, before the minister presented it in the budget, there was basically no education. Mm -hmm. And so when we rolled out the platform, we thought that people would jump onto the platform and start paying. But it doesn't work that way. You understand? So we need to deliberately work on education. How many times have district assembly come to their vicinity and say, property rate is due, come and pay? 
Nothing. So I believe that they shouldn't sit down and assume that people will just jump onto the platform and start paying. Number two, when the monies are collected, it is their duty to fix the street lights and other things. And people will voluntarily pay when they see that the money is being used in the various localities. So it is a call on the district assemblies that before you ensure that people come and pay, make sure you also do your job. And then the last one is that enforcement. If I don't pay, what, what, what happens to me? We have so many people who are not paying and they are there. Nothing happens. Sometimes you come from work and you see they will drop a sheet of paper assessment under your gate. And then they say, come to the office and pay. I mean, who, who in his normal sense would just say, okay, I'm coming. And not, if you don't go, nothing happens to you. So it's about time we do more of an engagement. Again, the district assemblies themselves who also don't, they don't, need, they don't even have data, like you mentioned. By the time you realize someone has finished building, then they will come and write on the stop work. Who gave them the permit? So if really they have data and they know where each building is situated, it shouldn't be a difficulty. And that's why I thought that the unified platform was the best. Number one, it reduces the human interaction where people will have to come and pay in the offices with cash. You can go on the platform and then log on and pay. So I believe that the current system is okay. F the exemptions you mentioned about religious education, religious uh, facilities, mm -hmm. yes, we know. We all go to church. We know the mocks, they are there. I believe that those are traditionally not owned by one person. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be the community. So if it is exempted, how many are they even? Barrier grounds, how many are they? They are not many. So I believe that the exemptions are okay as we speak now. What I will rather we direct more energy towards will be the enforcement. Mm. The laws must be applied. See, the whole idea is that you own property. You are holding wealth. And therefore, if you are holding wealth and you are not consuming, you are not creating, you should create, you should contribute something. So an uncompleted building, I know someone who has just roofed the building. When they came, the valuation is different from the one which is completed. So it's all based on the valuation. Yeah, I'm actually asking because, you know, in Ghana, a lot of us like building mm -hmm. in faces. Mm -hmm. So maybe if the person has not fully completed the building... It doesn't person, matter. It, we it, can it, give it. you a value <laughs> up to the level that you have built up to. And so when we have done that, we sh you should pay based on the value. And in fact, in future, we should even consider bare land mm. when we have solved <laughs> our problem of land ownership. Because mm. you can go to some very prime areas and then the land is just there. There for nothing. Meanwhile, we've constructed a road in front of it. And we are increasing. Today, if you go there, you want to sell that property. Because of the development around that, you will be able to sell it higher. So we should even consider including bare land in the, in the property rate. Talk of prime areas. And the very reason a lot of people are actually calling for, you know, an increase in the, in the rate that people in such areas, uh, uh, you pay now. Is it something that you... Yeah, of you, course. You, you and that will all depend on the valuation that the land valuation people put on. So a property in East Legon, you and I can easily <laughs> tell, they normally for sale. Let's go and ask. It's in dollars. Mm. So I'm expecting that the land valuation board will place a higher value on it. Mm. And so even if we are taking 0.5% of that value, mm. to be higher than uh, a five or five, seven mm. bedroom in Kaswa. <laughs> and then those people will be paying more. All right, uh, Francis, uh, we are wrapping up. I want to pick the final thought of Madame Messiam. Madame Messiam, you are with the GRE. <laughs> You have always under pressure to increase the country's revenue mobilization. And property rates has actually been one of the areas. Now, very soon, you will not be at the forefront of the collection. What kind of collaboration do you want to see government side, district assembly side, for us to have that effective and efficient property tax collection administration that we all want to see? All right, thank you very much. Looking at the current situation, in as much as the finance minister men mentioned it in the budget, we are yet to see its implementation. And I believe that GRO is go not going to stay out of the collection process. We will continue to support the local governments and the district assemblies to collect property rates. And again, with the start of every process, there are always problems. And as the problems come, just as my colleague said, 
we have to come together and find a way to resolve it. I believe if we dialogue, we can get it done better. I would want to use this media to draw attention to all Ghanaians that we all have to contribute our quota to the development of the country. You have to pay your property rates. Log on myassembly.gov.gh. You will have the opportunity to open and update your property if there's no information on. You have the opportunity to contact the assembly for more information. If you have information on it that does not meet your specs, maybe your property is at least Legon, but the value they've assigned to it is something lower, you also have the right to ask for correction. Let's all be part of revenue generation. It doesn't take GRA to do that. It takes all of us to be able to mobilize revenue. All right, thank you very much, Madam Emilia. Uh, Francis, I want you to conclude for us on this note. What do we stand to lose in terms of property tax, revenue-wise, potential revenue, and even as you see that, what are other countries doing right? What lessons can we pick from you know, other countries comparatively to better our tax and regime in respect to property taxation? So me, I think over the years, we have not been doing well at all when it comes to our property taxation. Um, 2020, 2022, just 39 million. 2023, the government projected 165 million cities. I believe that the GRA and um, the Judicial Assemblies have done well with the identification. So far, we are told over 12 billion uh, properties have been identified. It is a low-hanging fruit that we can easily pick. We don't need to work. The properties are there. They don't move. Properties don't move. All you do is just to put your systems in place and do the collection. And above all, the district assembly should not let the community members fix their own street lights. I don't see why I should pay property rates. And then my street is dark, and then I'll go to market and go and buy and call a, a electrician to come and fix a street light. The roads must be fixed. And I think the government should consider taking off most of the uh, uh, districts from the gov central government uh, you know, funding. Common funds should even be reduced. We should let them fund themselves from their own property uh, uh, located in their various jurisdictions. Wow, what an interesting way to end this insightful conversation for us. But that was Francis Timobo, a tax consultant. I also had with me here Madame Emilia Sam. She is an assistant commissioner at the Ghana Revenue Authority. This has been our tax dialogues here on the city breakfast show on 97.3 CTFM as well as breakfast daily on City TV. The conversation has not ended. We have more series for you right here on this platform. My name is Ni Lati Lati. Many thanks for your company.